They originally scheduled for about four months of activity, with design months, about five months of design, uh, which would have, our anticipation and expectation was that the design would be well informed by the needs analysis. And then construction and testing. Um, Tralee are going to take the lead on the construction and testing. We have a, an e-learning development support unit, and we spend a lot of time doing asynchronous development, so we would consider ourselves to have quite a bit of expertise in that particular arena. So we're going to lead up that, uh, and then the implementation months and dissemination, and, and Tom's going to talk much further about that in a few minutes. So that was the plan. As regards reality, thankfully, so far, fingers crossed, reality hasn't uh, diverged much from plan. Um, the needs analysis has taken six months. Um, Tom will get into the detail about why it took slightly longer. The design months now, because they've been so well informed by the needs analysis, um, the student survey and meetings with students in all the five uh, cluster partners, um, the design, we feel, uh, it will be pretty much well informed. And construction and testing has been somewhat compressed and the implementation then is as it was. So in essence, uh, the story is, is relatively positive. There have been dramas and there have been you know, uh, issues that you would expect. However, I think it's fair to say that all the issues which uh, have been highlighted throughout the research and throughout the one-to-one -one meetings with students and throughout the surveys with students have been taken on board to, to well inform the piece of work that's going to take place. And I think now the best thing to do is for me to take a break, hand you over to Tom, and he'll get into the nitty-gritty of the project and, and the methodology adopted. Okay. Uh, considering we only rehearse on the, on the plane up, uh, 3 minutes 46 seconds is very good. So, well done. Um, so, yeah, as I said, I think overall we're, we're, we're reasonably happy with the way it's gone. Um, as Sarah was alluding to, I suppose we do have some squalls and some tailwinds and stuff like that as with any project, but uh, as I said, I think we've, we've gone pretty pretty well. Um, as Tim says, one of the whole things we was, wanted to be very much evidence-based in terms of, uh, we didn't just want to sort of sit and gaze into our navel and think about what sort of international students need on, on making the transition. And I suppose um, Ireland, you know, particularly hasn't looked very well in the last few months with a, a high number of, of, of colleges, admittedly private colleges, not public, but it's, it's certainly not, uh, making Ireland look too good, and, and particularly when you're maybe eight, ten thousand miles away, the differences between public and private colleges may not be appreciated by, by different students. So I think it's important that whatever we come up with is, is as well informed as possible. So I suppose to kick things off, we staged a, a webinar as part of the, the National Forum series, and I, I, I suppose, like, you know, to, to, to be fair, the National Forum, the series of webinars and, se and seminars have been very good because it sort of got the group uh, together. Uh, as we said, we're a HEA designated cluster, but that's it's all very well in the abstract sense, but it's great to actually start with a project. So it sort of kicked things off that way. We, we start off as well then commissioning a, a literature review, uh, just to sort of alert us to, to some of the, the situations, as well as that you know, we have people who, like it's uh, Yvonne and Suzanne, who, who know the area well, but I suppose just to sort of expand it uh, a little bit then. Uh, looked at a, a review of the technical options, uh, how we might sort of uh, host the the. the the project that, you know, that we actually eventually uh, develop. Um, as for the ethical approval in the five partner institutes, and as we'll see on the next situation, the next slide, that probably was the thing which took the biggest amount of time like that. Um, and that, that certainly was uh, an issue. And I thought sometimes some ethical uh, ethics committee only meet every two months and stuff, so that was an issue there. Uh, what was done, the online survey of international students in the partner institutes. Um, that, that just finished up uh, about eight or nine days ago, and we have nearly 600 responses um, out of around 5,000 potential students, so we're very, very happy with that sort of re re response like that. Um, we also wanted sort of qualitative input because the, the idea is also, to, as I said, to, to try and uh, end up with, with, two, with a, two parts of the project. One, uh, the developing of online uh, artefacts which would be used by students prior to coming here, but also then online resources which uh, staff now going to be teaching international students could then look at and sort of help help inform their, their, their teaching and, and learning strategies. And I suppose regular team communication has been a, a, a major part of it. So what we achieved, the literature review, and uh, I suppose in many ways I was told once that the best research just confirms what you already knew or at least suspected. And I think certainly in that case, the literature review sort of highlighted certain issues. I think one of the things which came through from the literature review was the dirt of research done in Ireland. We had to often look at, at Britain and Australasia and, 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 and America and, and, and Europe. So I suppose that, that's going to be one of the outputs there as well. 
as I said, the, the online survey, we use SurveyMonkey, we got 573 um, responses. The interviews with, and we had a mixture of people both lecturing, uh, the staff, and uh, also then the international officers and sort of issues there that, that they're sort of facing like that. Um, because uh, the original plan was for, for three um, units for lecturing staff, and it, it now looks like it'll sort of morph into maybe two for lecturing staff and one for staff in the colleges, because it's important as well also for the admin staff dealing with international students, the library staff and so on also have an appreciation like that. And as I said, the, one of the outcomes then was, was the uh, webinar, which I think really, it, um, it, it really pulled the, the, the group together. I thought it was, it was a good thing. Um, so what have we done here? Three face-to-face -face team meetings. I suppose it's interesting. Uh, the virtual world is great, but um, as I said, it's great to be actually in the room. Um, we were actually only up in Waterford IT last Wednesday, and I think it's, I was so glad and, because I was the person that's going to be standing here, so I wanted to have a chat with everybody else as well. So I think that certainly has helped. And you, you can't uh, overestimate uh, the, the importance of that. And although IT Trilly is the lead on it, we have committed to alternating. So all five institutions will actually be hosting one of the meetings. And that was, as I suppose, it's do as we say and do as we do, I suppose. Um, the conference calls, uh, obviously, we don't have to meet all of the time like that. Um, you know, uh, as I said at the start, we weren't talking as regularly, but we now do it every every fortnight like that. Uh, even if it's only just to sit in and report that there's not anything to report, it's just handy to try and keep everybody on track like that. Um, working with, uh, we worked on agreed templates in order to get the ethical approval because before you could get ethical approval, we had to submit um, examples of what the, the, the survey would be like and what the interview questions would be. Uh, and so on like that. So that, that took a bit of uh, time like that. And as I said, we well, although it's been managed centrally, we have had a big input from partners, and as I said, we're very committed to this uh, sort of a partnership uh, approach. So that's what we've done so far. Uh, the challenges, as I said, the time to achieve ethical approval. For some, it dragged on, and then, you know, yourself with an ethical approval, someone might make a suggestion, which meant then that we had to go back and then change it, and it's, well, we were a bit like a convoy. We could only go as fast as the the slowest ship and I suppose it just brings back this idea I mean I suppose collaboration is one of those sort of abstract ideas that everybody likes and then said it's great but the devil is in the detail like that and I suppose the collaboration is it's presented as being like a self-evident good and as I said and while we do agree with that it ta that takes a bit of time to tease out like that um, I think the ethical approval was also very important to us as well because the aim would be that we actually get some outputs out with not just the online objects but also sort of research that can be published by ourselves and also be utilised by other people as well. We're very mindful that it is public money. And the thing is, if we only were just doing it in terms of developing an online unit, um, uh, in terms of teaching and learning, the ethical approval wouldn't have to be as stringent. But if we're going to be going down the road of actually publications, then we needed to get it right. And I suppose the beauty about that is now that we have something that we can stand over and, and publish now, and we're happy with that. The increased number of conference calls and put them on a regular basis, which has worked out well. And capturing both the, the comprehensive and, and specific uh, student voice. And that's what we've tried to do um, in terms of, of, say, starting off with the webinar and then with the, with the surveys like that. Um, but the opportunity, certainly the value of the partnership and the different perspectives. It's been interesting, as I said, to have people who are lecturers only, uh, for people who are international officers only, people who are involved, like Yvonne, who will be lecturing and involved in the international. So that's been, been important. And just to get that sense of the different colleges, the, uh, said obviously the ongoing value of the research over just the object. So I suppose what we wanted for the National Forum is to get more bang for its book. Yep. Uh, the relationship between uh, building the institutes and between the partners has certainly worked out uh, very well. Where are we going with the project? Pilot unit for testing, 8th of August this year. Um, we've also um, bought um, for uh, the website liveandlearninireland.ie.com and .org. We hopefully that people like the name Live and Learn in Ireland. Creation of four to five units. So the first initial unit will be ready. There's international students arriving in UCC on the 8th of August, so we're working through there. So that'll help inform the rest. But the, the thing is, we've, we've, we've all our usability on on the backs of the research, we'll have our usability design, so it's just the look and feel, but we're happy that we have identified the issues that we need to cover. Presenting uh, uh, findings at, at various conferences and stuff like that, uh, obviously publishing the research, um, and then also face-to-face -face and online workshops on how to utilise these units, because they're only going to be as good as we disseminate it and get it out there. 
So in terms of dissemination, phase four, uh, will be February to May, uh, identification of sites for CPD, number of conferences and, and where it might be in a number of avenues and venues, publish the research, walking through the international officers network, which is also very, very important. And also then, you know, that we'll advertise it with the recruitment agency uh, through their, through their uh, agents as well, through different colleges. How might we, we site visits for CPD, uh, publish as I said there. Uh, also, the, so we've just avoided in terms of formal and informal uh, dissemination. I think also the data analytics will be very important. That, you know, we're not we, we're going to have far more data than we can actually utilise for this. But I think it's certainly our intention to to, to, to make more use of that. And maybe with the NFTL, if they're taking on more uh, research students next year, we'd be certainly be having a aim to to maybe get someone in to, to really do justice to that data. You asked for three benefits. We're so good down in Kerry. We give you we give you an extra one like that. Um, I'm down there too long, I tell you. Uh, the practical open source. So they certainly hopefully will make the lives of international students easier. It is about transitions. And we certainly have learned a lot from the surveys and, and, and the interviews. So we are certainly getting a sense that, you know, if 1% if, 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 if or 2% of the students' lives is a bit easier, then it's not a, it's not a bad day's work like that. Obviously, you know, encouraging forward and national research into the needs because this is a, it's a major, major industry. If you want to put it those terms, that, that it's a real issue. It's a real issue for the students. You want them to enjoy themselves. The real issue for the colleges who who, who want to provide as as, as good a, an experience as possible. Offer a national resource for those working with you know to to, to help inform and, and their and assist in their role. So now they actually have a set of resources that they can direct uh, students to. And I suppose the digital literacy. You know, in terms of the people who are actually going to be helping using it and the people who are going to be looking at it, they'll, they'll get an appreciation of the opportunities. Thank you on questions. <laughs> okay.